Hey guys, today we're talking about PEK, P-E-K-K, -K, polyether ketone ketone, also known as, popularized by Stratasys as Entero, mm. uh, developed by Arkema, the new peak in town, right? This is the guy that's coming in, and he's like, yo, peak, you're at the top of the, top of the tower, and I'm coming in to be like, yo, I'm easier to do, and I got the same properties, let's do this, come on. <laughs> I much prefer to use PEK over PEAK. Yeah. Big solid parts, um, yeah. dense intense parts, PEC makes your life much easier. And Wait. in a lot of ways, it is the fix for PEAK. I'm surprised it's not, people haven't forgotten about PEAK. Right. Well, what makes this yeah. stuff unique, Rob, as opposed to the PEAK? I know it has better performance, but I mean. It's amorphous and semi-crystalline. What does that mean? That means you print it, and when you print it, it's amorphous. That means it doesn't have a crystalline structure in there, so it can move, and it can, it can, it's uh, got a TG, so it'll it'll start failing at a certain point. But if you anneal it, or maybe print it at the certain temperatures, but when you anneal it, uh, over time, crystalline structures actually form and lock it in to the shape it's at. And that actually increases the heat deflection temperature, the rigidity, all the mechanical properties significantly, almost doubles them. Depending on how you print it, have two different filaments there. Pretty that much. That you can make work for you. And yeah. the difference, you'll know something's been annealed in the amorphous versus crystalline, is grab that dark, dark honey benchy. Yeah, let's figure, one of these is, uh, got it. Nope, these are both PPS. This is it. That this is the one. Is, hey, on, yeah. Jay, can you grab some of your peck parts? The big disc thing that's been annealed. We need the disc, we need the, the fails, anything you got in peck. So if you print it one way, you get this, which is super accurate, looks great. Um, it behaves, oh my gosh, it looks so good. It's like reflected. It's very cool. It is cool. It's, it's very cool. It's actually very strong in this state too, before it's been annealed or anything. And the hand of Jay appears Thanks, once again. Fantastic. So you, this is the same filament right here, just printed and post-processed differently. That's the same thing. So this looks just like Peak that you're probably familiar with, this weird medical, right. sterile right. beige. Uh, Matt over at 3DX Tech actually told me, he's like, we never used to confuse Ultim 1010 with anything until we yeah. got PEC. Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> how do you tell the difference? Well, uh, stick it in the oven for a while, see if it changes color. No, just kidding. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> so that technically means that if you buy a roll, it's a little bit more expensive than Peak, right? It but is, it's it is. far, far, oh. far more versatile and can simplify your printing experience. It's so much easier to print. Like if you have a, you know. This Benchy is like perfect. And it, this, format HT, uh, printing a huge part in Peak is practically impossible. But printing the same part in Pack. Man, this is, looks good. It's actually pretty doable. You know, it's got similar operating temperatures as peak, you know, up in the 200 and 300 Celsius range. It's got m higher compression strength than peak, up to 80% more. Wait, I thought peak was supposed to be the king of the hill. It was. It was. What are we gonna do? We're gonna print Switch peg. Switch to peg. Yeah. Uh, it's got better barrier performance for uh, carbon dioxide. Uh, it's easier, much easier to print than peak. It prints lower temperature than peak, around 350 Celsius instead of up in the 400s. It does have a higher TG than peak. Peak's around 183. I think this is around 203 or so. It can be annealed to have an even higher melting point. Uh, the thing with the thing with amorphous, amorphous polymers don't actually have a melting point. It's got a glass transition, and that's just the point where it starts losing all its mechanical properties. Semicrystalline plastics have this structure that actually lets them perform way past their TG and gives it a specific melting point, and that's when those bonds break down, those crystalline structures just you know, dissipate. So when you anneal it, it actually makes all the mechanical properties much, much higher. Practically speaking, it's better than Peak in almost every way uh, for 3D printing, but Peak's been around a lot longer, it's got a lot more certifications, proven use cases, and things of that nature, so. They're both in the same family. They are. P A E K. Yeah, polyaryl ether ketones. And it's like a variation of that, so. Right. I don't understand why this isn't the new kid on the block. So it's really new in the 3D printing sector. Uh, Stratasys, I think, was the first one to, to really put it out there as a 3D printing material and then closely followed, of 
very quickly by Arkema Kimya from the Armor Group. Just like Peak, they're known for their amazing thermal, chemical, and mechanical properties. Very strong, very heat resistant, uh, very chemically resistant to a really wide variety of solvents and acids. Uh, you can use this in automotive situations, aerospace situations. Uh, it's really, really good in aerospace because it's way, way lighter than uh, most of the plastic counterparts and the metal counterparts that it can actually live up to. If you need accuracy, you can get accuracy, depending on how you mm -hmm. print it. If you need strength, you can anneal it. If you need better printing overall performance than peak, you've got it. I think the only problem is it's more expensive. It's a little more expensive. A little bit. You're going to save all in, that money. In carbon fiber. In failed prints. Is there a carbon fiber version? There is a carbon fiber version. It's beautiful. It's going to print better than PLA, oh, I'll tell dude. you that much. Yeah, pretty much. Much better layer adhesion than Peak. Um, oh, yeah, it's it, huge. Basically, anywhere Peak can be used, this can be used. Uh, and uh, that includes the industrial sector for mechanical parts or gears and things like that. Uh, you've got machine parts. It, it's it's it can replace aluminum in a lot of situations. Oil and gas industry, MRI shielding. Yeah, basically what I'm doing over here is trying to look through this data sheet and figure out what it's not good at. <laughs> right. And Dude, uh, um, a continuous use temperature, I think after it's been annealed, of 260 Celsius. It's got <laughs> slightly lower TG than peak glass transition temperature, which allows it to be printed at a lower temperature. 360 to 390 is usually where we see it printed. Uh, it's got a melting point of 335 Celsius. Let's just, let's just bang out what this stuff is awesome at. Here's a Golly. quick list. Machine parts. It can replace aluminum and other metals easily. Oil and gas parts, so subject to extreme heat and pressure. MRI shielding, which suggests radiation resistance. The medical industry, aerospace, the space, the radiation in space, space as well. It's just yeah. space is just crazy. It's super lightweight, which helps out a lot. Continuous use temperature, 260 Celsius. It can do bursts at 300. Glass transition temperature of 162 degrees Celsius, lower than peak. Melt temperature, you can print it at lower temperatures than peak. Everything is winning so far. Excellent, resistant to chemicals, high resistance to hydrolysis, flame, smoke toxic toxicity, UL 94V0 flammability rating. Yes. Okay. Low levels of smoke, self-extinguishing, uh. very, is it? Yeah. yeah. Very resistant to acids, alkali. I mean, what else do you got? Was oils, gases, liquids. Uh, you know, basically, it's okay, so there's all that stuff. When it comes to the mechanical properties, it's as rigid as a lot of metals. Very high strength, high toughness, extreme impact resistance, excellent dimensional stability. So when you're in there and it's in the heat in these different situations or in, in, in whatever, it's not gonna shift and change so much. It's gonna just maintain its exact shape. Very low permeability means the stuff isn't gonna get into it. Uh, it can be a barrier layer between two things that should not interact. Right, right. Excellent for gears. Uh, and anything that's gonna see a lot of wear or a lot of friction, it's got very, very good wear resistance. Stands up really, really, really well to abrasion. Uh, it's got excellent heat creep resistance. It's the best. It's the best. But the best. it's also expensive. The only yeah. downside is its price. And I'll probably get better over time. Tell them the price, Rob. Between six and $700 a kilogram. This is that one that people are going to make in fun filament. of when... In filament. You know. Yeah. You, some oozes out of your nozzle and they say, that's $70 worth of filament yeah. you just wasted. It's like, do I want a weekend vacation or do I want to print some really cool parts and pack? Uh, wow. I'm going to go with cool parts and pack. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you need it, uh, you're probably not going to need it. There are parts we've had a nightmare time with and we asked the guy, have you heard of peck? No? Let's try it. Here's what it can do. It yeah. prints properly the first time. Yeah. Job done. Yep. Way less failed prints, way less just warping in general. Uh, it's just, it's easier to work with. If you need Peak, check out PEC. If you're like, there's nothing other than Peak, have you checked out PEC yet? Very, 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 very good stuff. If you guys have questions about these materials, or you're not sure what to use, what the right machine is, what the right material is, if you have a project and you've got specifications you need to meet, 
uh, but you don't know what the best options are for materials in the 3D printing sector right now, give us a call. We're here to help. We love hearing about your projects, applications, and uh, helping you choose the right thing for you. Everybody needs something different. Every machine has its own advantages and disadvantages, as well as every material. So let's find the right fit for you. Yeah, that's what that's what matters. We do it all. We can probably point you in the right direction. Uh, either way, we're happy to help. Thank you, guys. This is solid, by the way, guys. This is yeah. Oh. And that layer is crazy. That would be such a nightmare and peak. Crazy. Awesome. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you on the next video.